What's up, y'all? After another controversial Pocono incident for Denny Hamlin this past week, I, like many other creators, decided to make a video on Denny. This one being a look into how fans see Denny as either a hero to the sport of NASCAR or a villain to the sport. Denny Hamlin is one of the most interesting cases in the history of NASCAR villain roles. Almost all NASCAR villains become beloved by the NASCAR fan base as their retirement approaches or their latter years of their career. Or other contributing factors, Denny is a driver that's gone the other direction. He's trended away from a fan favorite towards being a villain of the sport. Why is that? Here's a breakdown. Denny Hamlin began his career with a hero status for many reasons, as his beginnings are an incredible story. A family that financially did everything they could to give Denny the chance to be seen. And a short track dominance was indeed seen. And seen by none other than J.D. Gibbs. And this connection brought Denny onto a fast track. Because of J.J. Yaley's struggles and Denny's immediate success into the Cup Series was incredible. Everyone loves the great story that Denny was having, the success he had. And years later, Denny would deliver an incredible storybook finish to the 2019 Daytona 500. But these heroic backgrounds and moments for Denny would be greatly be overshadowed for much of the fan base for a variety of reasons. The brakes here, but he's got Kyle Busch in the outside lane. Logano and Priest grew up together at the quarter midget tracks Watch. in Connecticut. And Logano looks low. Oh, top lane Kyle gets Bush filled. It's Kyle. Logano. Kyle Busch in the top lane. Logano on the bottom, McDowell, the second yellow car. Where will he go? I so go. interesting uh. that McDowell decided to go with Kyle Busch, but here comes Eric Jones on the inside. Denny Hamlin. Hamlin what, off turn number out? four. No, side-by-side -side battle to the finish this time. Denny Hamlin wins his second Daytona 500 and wins it for Coach Gibbs in Toyota. In the 11 car. Wow. What a day for J.D. Gibbs, for Joe Gibbs, for that whole team. Boy, that's storybook stuff right there. That was meant to be. NASCAR has always had a couple of villains. The fan base generally as a collective will focus their boos to a single or a couple drivers. Through the years, whether it's been Dara Waltrip or Dale Earnhardt versus Jeff Gordon or a Rusty Wallace. Or for the last couple decades, it's been Jeff Gordon or then Tony Stewart to Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski, Joey Logano or booing or the villainous attributing to repeated success of a Jimmy Johnson. But for Denny Hamlin's villain and hero meter for the fan base, the last few years has been so heavily shifted by the removal of hate or boos towards other drivers. Brad Keselowski's villain years are past. Joey Logano hate is off and on. The most notable, though, for Denny Hamlin is being the, retract, the retraction of hate towards Kyle Busch. After leaving Joe Gibbs Racing and leaving Toyota, Kyle Busch's quote-unquote all has been forgiven, as mentioned by Dale Jr. on his download, but for the past several years it has felt that the fan base has been searching for their new driver or two to always hate or dislike. And Denny Hamlin the past couple of years has taken all the ingredients and cooked the villain soup. One of the biggest reasons Denny is seen as a villain by some, or by many, is his run-ins with Hendrick drivers. Let's roll some tape. To the back of the 19, the outside line's gonna have to speed the momentum down into turn one. Reddick not even close to the back of the 19. The 11 clears him, and now here comes Denny Hamlin to the inside for the lead through one. He runs the five wide, almost into the fence. Up into the wall with the five, and now the momentum. Be of him. Take him now. Take him now. Bit. He's going to get to him, get him loose. He is loose. Got him loose. He got to wiggle him. They're going to be side by side. Now. But then he had to lift. He did. Oh, he turned him. And Larson's in the wall. Barely oh, my gosh. Him. Barely tapped him. Run, Denny. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Denny Hamlin. Elliott has the lead, but Hamlin looks to the inside. Elliott diving, trying to block. Down the back stretch again. Less than three to go. The bumper to the back of the 24. 
Elliott goes around, Hamlin takes the lead and the caution comes out. Get it going, get it going if you can, get it. Looks like there's some contact. Oh, the we 24 of Byron. Remember what happened off of turn two. Byron felt like maybe that the 11 ran him into the fence off of turn two. Byron takes that opportunity to possibly retaliate. Even more mad than Chris Gabehart. Listen. I have no, I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen a replay of it, but good grief. If he's mad about what happened off of two, you got tight underneath of him, lifted on. All right, so Denny Hamlin clearly is upset. They've been, this is being on all the way down the back straightaway, banging into each other. Denny is, the, the argument is, this is out of turn two, how they get together and the 24 hits the wall. And people are going to say, well, you know, the 24 spun him out on purpose. Now Truex has to hold the one off and the 43 off, the one back to his rear bumper as the 48 continues to try to take the lead from the 11. Oh! oh the 11 around! The 11 goes around and the caution will come out. A restart. How about that? And this is going to get interesting. <laughs> oh, boy. Denny Hamlin not happy with the way Bowman raced him. Big picture here, big picture. He's just a hack. He's just an absolute hack. Um, he gets his ass kicked by his teammates every week. It's just, you know, he's fucking terrible. He's just terrible, and he sees one opportunity, and he, he takes it. But obviously, um, you know, he's got the fastest car every week, and he runs 10th. So um, he, he, you know, didn't want to race this there. For me personally, I didn't have any harsh feelings toward Denny till that last clip. Denny sat there and called the driver that had the second most wins in the series a hack. I will slightly give the understanding that Bowman doesn't run the best consistently as the rest of Hendrick, but bashing on a guy essentially because he made a mistake when you've run over guys is not a good look. And again, that was Bowman's fourth win that season, and Denny making the comments after his front stretch situation was a double down that didn't sit well. Something that rubs a lot of people the wrong way is people feel Denny is a complete hypocrite. Denny preaches on racing fair and clean, but Denny has made it pretty clear. Between Ross Chastain and Kyle Larson at Pocono alone, Denny is just fine stepping his toe over the line but crying a circus when another driver races him that way or says they will not be pushed around by Denny. Denny's first bad dealings of messing with the popular drivers was an indirect one. As the Brad Keselowski rivalry began and occurred while Brad drove for none other than quote-unquote NASCAR Jesus, Junior Motorsports began its success through Brad Keselowski, and Dale Jr.'s Xfinity team blossoming as a result of Brad Keselowski's success gave many fans positive feelings towards Brad in those early years. So Denny beginning a rivalry with Brad in Dale Jr.'s car wasn't exactly the greatest PR move. For Denny Hamlin, not every rivalry has had negative impacts on his PR status. The Denny versus Joey Logano rivalry, for the most part, was positive for Denny. As early on, Denny Hamlin versus Joey Logano led to the unfortunate circumstance of Denny breaking his back at Fontana. So when Denny suffered the broken back with the inc incident with Joey Logano, and Joey made the comments that at the time saying Denny deserved it, referring to just wrecking, but later coming out that Denny unfortunately had suffered the injury and would have str then would have struggles returning, it made Joey the easy big villain in that rivalry. And for almost everyone that isn't a fan of Joey, and for years to come, could have or would have jumped on Denny's bandwagon or at least on Denny's side in that rivalry, and that would continue for years and years and give clips like this. Do you want to go? I said, yes, I'm here, but then he runs away, so. What was the altercation on track that led to it? Uh, I, uh, I, I got close off of turn four. It looks like we got together, and, and it looks like collateral damage. He, he blew a tire, but, I mean, he would probably say, ah, yeah, short sure, track race it. You gonna try and find him at this? No, I don't need to find him. 
Another aspect that's a double-edged sword, the manufacturer. Some fan base hate or dislike towards Toyota is real. Personally, I drive a 2014 Chevy Camaro, and yes, I am 100% a Chevy supporter. So that when a guy like Tyler Reddick goes to Toyota, I'm not booing Reddick at all. I still like Tyler Reddick. But if I have a choice now of who I want to win, or if there's a late race battle... I'd rather see a Chevy driver win now. So for the parts of the fan base that is indifferent about manufacture, this doesn't move the needle. But for the ones that do care, it's most likely it's a 70 to 30 or maybe even an 80 to 20 swing of negative to positive influence for Denny's villain or hero. On to another aspect of Denny Hamlin's hero-villain status. In 2020, Denny came to a realization, and he would pursue a path that would forever be a strong double-edged sword to his hero or villain status to many groups of fans, becoming a team owner and starting 2311 Racing. For many fans of the sport, we see Denny making this investment into the sport as an incredible positive. Because it is. This definitely is notches into the hero category. But for some people, the fact he owns Toyotas, again, the manufacturer situation, is a negative. But also the creating of a team and making Bubba Wallace as the centerpiece is a negative for certain groups of fans. Being the car owner for Bubba and just the associations may make some fans chop it up as villain points on the scale, whether it's a little or a lot. On to our final aspect, that is the double-edged sword variety, his success. Denny Hamlin is the most accomplished driver in NASCAR's history that has yet to win a championship. And this success is a double-edged sword. For those that are fans of Denny Hamlin, they almost always have success to enjoy and celebrate. Historical accomplishments to feel a piece of. Winners do get some bandwagon love or just additional love for being extra successful. Can't blame it. But the other side of this is that for fans of the other drivers he may beat or that just have reason to dislike him, the success may be something to add to their dislike or hate towards Denny. Successful drivers in NASCAR sometimes are villains. This makes Denny more of the hero for his fans and more of the villain for those that may loathe Denny Hamlin. So in summary of the Denny Hamlin hero argument, we have that personality he will show. His abundance of investment into the sport, which as a fan of NASCAR we cannot thank Denny Hamlin enough for, as an owner of a race team and the time commitment to actions detrimental. He has an incredible story and background from his parents' financial sacrifice and the J.D. Gibbs connection. And his success is easy to root for for his fans. So let's take a summary look at the villain points argument for Denny Hamlin. For many fans, the incidents he's had with popular drivers and wrecking guys when it's believed they did and when the drivers didn't deserve it but also the fact Denny isn't owning these instances and his interviews at times like the Alex Bowman comments. He drives an unpopular manufacturer for a part of the fan base. Is Joe Gibbs racing and ownership of Bubba Wallace's car? And for some fans, they simply acquired a void and a villain driver. If they eased back on hate towards Kyle Busch or Brad Keselowski or any other villain they may have removed in the past few years, Denny took their place. So let me know in the comments. Do you think Denny is a hero or a villain? Or maybe you just sit back and enjoy the battles. My opinion is that Denny is excellent for the sport, but he is in a level one villain status. He's a team owner and is extremely invested into the success of NASCAR. He gives everyone an inside look into the sport with his Actions Detrimental podcast. He isn't scared to generally tell the world and NASCAR how he feels, penalties included. But my problem is that he pushes and crosses the line sometimes, but claims he never did. If he owned those times like this past weekend, his good definitely would keep him a hero.